Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and welcome back to our live videos. We had a little break over the holidays where we recap the year, but now we're back to doing some live videos every week. The first one I want to do is complete our series on Jaronism and seven ways that you can tell for yourself that we never really went to the moon. Now, we've looked at moon rocks and stars and shadows and a variety of the lunar landing sites and things that they always claim are faked. Today, we're going to tackle the flapping flag. So cue up the music and let's go. Uh, what's next? The flag wasn't moving. Okay, let's see here. Uh, perhaps one of the most talked about pieces of evidence to suggest the moon landing was faked has to do with the alleged movement of the flag. Footage of the U.S. flag moving after it was planted has been cited as evidence that the wind's blowing through the cloth, wind that can't exist on the moon. Okay? In truth, the flag is not flapping. It's disturbed as it's being planted. No, in, in some cases, maybe you can say that, but I'm about to show you in another case where the astronauts are in the craft. And those disturbances are causing ripples to move through the cloth. There's no denying that. It's not fluttering in the wind. It says the flag is still up there, and it looks like it's in a gust of wind thanks to wires placed inside to keep the cloth upright, and it's been still for decades now. It's just sitting there still, everyone. You believe that? I don't. Uh, let's watch this video, and again, it's a great channel called Moon Fakery. Uh, this is The Hidden Flag by Jeff Winsor. Uh, he's done some great work. Okay, well, I think one of the first clues here is that it's a channel called Moon Fakery. Now, it would seem to me that they've kind of got a conclusion there that they're promoting, so they're going to try and find ways that this is somehow fake. But then we'll go ahead and have a look at a few others. So here, we'll continue. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and start this and uh, listen to what he's got to say. This is Apollo 14. The astronauts have just completed their second excursion on the moon during EVA-2. And so they're in the craft, by the way. And they have gone back into the ship, and they are preparing now to jettison what they will not be taking with them back to the moon. And in the upper right-hand corner of your picture, you are going to see the flag move eight times. Okay, so before we go too much further, let's go ahead and correct the timeline here. These astronauts are not finishing their second lunar excursion. They're starting their second lunar excursion. Now, when you step out of the lunar module, obviously you have to vent the air out of the module and create a vacuum on both sides of the door before you can open it. So you put your spacesuit on, you vent the air out of the lunar module, you open the door, and you get out and you play around on the moon for a while. Seems pretty simple. Now where does the air from the lunar module go? It's vented out of vent right underneath the door. Okay. What's pointing at the flag? That vent. So maybe that might give us a little hint as to why the flag seems to move a little bit. So watch carefully up here. This is just playing. These guys are in there. There's, you know, they're talking back and forth and what they have to do to depressurize and everything. You know, I was curious. Did you guys catch that? Sharon said that they're in the lunar module getting ready to depressurize. That means that they're getting ready to leave the lunar module. They're not coming back into the lunar module. And his friend said that they were going back in. But Jaron knows that they're going out. Why didn't he correct that? I'm curious. And uh, we're going to be watching this area right here. And, you know, I've checked this very carefully to see, like, is the screen moving out? Well, there's the flag. It's blowing in the wind. And I, you know, I've lined this up to say, well, is the whole screen moving? What's going on here? Then it disappears. But no, the screen didn't move. This shadow is still lined up equally. You can kind of look at this crease maybe here. If you can see that, I don't know if it comes through. Uh, it might not. But if you kind of look at that crease and exactly where it is with these shadows lined up with these rocks, um, again, you can just watch. And remember, there is no astronauts holding this flag. There it is again, blowing. Let's listen to Jeff talk about it a little more. It's just blowing in the breeze. And there is no possible scientific explanation that fits this scenario with the astronauts in the ship. Well, this is the difference between science and a conspiracy story. Now, I just gave you the timeline of what they were doing in the lunar module. They decompressed the lunar module, the flag flapped. 
there is a valve that vented gas in the direction of the flag. It's a very possible cause and effect relationship. And it's well documented that that's exactly the timeline that this occurred. Yet you ignore that and go off on this tangent that this proves that the moon landings were fake. You know, we just got done talking about moon rocks. We got done talking about photographs of the landing sites from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. We matched up the footprints and the tracks of the lunar rover from when the mission occurred to the photographs from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. They match exactly. We, of course, have instrumentation on the moon that we can still use, uh, the laser reflectors, for example. Yet, you want to cling to this impossible story that the flag was flapping in the breeze. Therefore, this occurred on Earth. Therefore, the moon landings were fake. You completely ignore all the evidence that supports the moon landing in favor of some fantastical story. This is a clear smoking gun, folks. And we've been told Pretty by clear. NASA and their defenders... Now, again, these are just going to be served up and volleyed, right? They're going to be returned. And, you know, you can, we'll just click through this and see no flag there, little flag there, little more flag, little less. Now, you can go and follow this video. And again, the link will be in the description. Please check it out in its entirety because you can actually see the answers that they give for why this flag is blowing as such. Now, Jaron, let's just take a moment and actually look at the reasons that that flag flapped. There's a website out there that you can go to. Here it is right, right here, moonhoaxdebunked.com. And it talks about experiments that demonstrated it here on Earth. Here's Mythbusters went in 2008, I believe it was, and showed how a flag flaps differently in air versus in a vacuum. There's no air resistance to slow it down in a vacuum, so it tends to undulate longer when it's disturbed. So even bumping it will cause it to flap back and forth much longer than it would flap on Earth. And, oh, look at this. There's your Apollo 14 flag flutter. And what happened? It occurred when they were getting ready for their second moonwalk, which means they had to vent all the air inside the cabin. This venting occurred through a valve located in the lunar module hatch, which faces the flag. There you go. Here on Apollo 15, one of the astronauts walked by and bumped the flag, causing it to sway a little bit. And you can look at all of these videos. I suggest you go ahead and have a look at them because, uh, you know, they're pretty clear cut. I reviewed them all, but I just don't want to cut them and everything and dump them into my video. But have a look at this Mythbusters one right here. Nine days after what else do you AJV need? claimed that the flag had been blown, now check the this ALSJ out. people made an official response to the Bad Astronomy Board. And here it is, quote, As one of the posters noted, the flag swings around the pole in response to cabin depression. Can you imagine that while they were depressing the cabin, somehow enough gas dumped out of the craft which flew across the nothingness of space and affected the flag holy smokes it would be a very interesting exercise in fluid dynamics to estimate how long it would take expansion of the dumped gas to reach the flag and how much force it would impart you're right that would be a fascinating exercise in fluid dynamics and what great proof of your theory so you did the fluid dynamics. You showed that the gas could not have reached the flag from the lunar module with sufficient force in order to make it flap. You did the math on that, right? And, and you can present that? You know, because so far all we have is personal incredulity. But now this is your opportunity to actually prove your case. I hope you take it. There are folks who know how to make such estimates, but I'm not one of them. So again, these are just thing after thing after thing that we can point out about the moon landing, but they'll just be returned. But you see, Jared, they screwed up because they gave you a way to prove them wrong. All you had to do was just do the fluid dynamics, calculate the force imparted on the flag and how long it would take for it to reach it. And you can prove them wrong right now. You've done the math, right, Jared? Go ahead and present it. 
And there's people out there that are so set in this idea of the moon landings and how great America is and how great we are and how great our our ingenuity is and, and the brilliance of 400,000 people coming together for this one thing that was 50 years ago that we can't repeat now, that they're willing to take any excuse. So this is the excuse, right? That there's some sort of uh, gas flying out, which is just nonsense. Well, yes, Jared, it was an amazing accomplishment by hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, we put 12 men on the moon. It was amazing. And we're looking to do it again in 2024. So we'll see how that works out. And by the way, we believe it because we can prove it. Now, you can easily disprove it by doing that math that I asked you about. Did you do the fluid dynamics? Did you calculate the force on the flag from venting the atmosphere of the lunar module and how long it would take to get there? Perhaps there are some measurements out there that record the pressure wave going by to help you out. Let's see. Again, you got to check out this video in its entirety. Uh, he even goes through and explains exactly how much. We'll Things listen to this. Right here. They mentioned this graph in their defense, but it actually destroys their alibi. The pressure of the atmosphere is measured on the left side where it says pressure tor, and you will see that the pressure changes from 10 to the minus seven approximately to almost 10 to the minus six. That is an infinitesimal amount. That is a tiny, tiny amount you cannot even imagine. Okay, so let me just get this straight. We did measure a pressure wave go by towards the flag. Now, you say it's small. Yeah, it is. But how big of a pressure wave would you need to move the flag? How do you know that that's not enough? What test have you personally done? Have you done the mathematics on it to see how much force would be needed and how much force that would impart? That's science, my friend. Point zero zero zero. He goes in to show you exactly how nonsense it is uh, by comparing it to different wind gusts and what exactly that pressure is. And it's, it's, you, you can't even imagine how little that is. It's not possible. But again, you go back to these articles and you read that it says that the flag, in truth, it's not flapping. It's disturbed as it's being planted. And people who read these kind of argue, art, articles on popular science, is it any wonder why they think we went to the moon? Because articles like this are like, yeah, this is right. It's only flapping because the guys are touching it. You know, that doesn't just wave in the wind, even though it does. But again, if they find out that it does in my video or another video, they're just going to go and listen. Well, it's actually gas depressurization. Now, the guys were in the craft, and when they depressurized it, it, it uh, blew the flag around. So whatever you put up there, whatever you put over the net, it's going to be returned. You have to expect that. They can't just say, oh, you're right, the flag is moving. Clearly, the entire thing was fake. They, well, they can't say that. They can't let that out, and they never will. And so you either need to be smart enough to recognize these things, or you need to believe it. It's up to you. Clearly, you know my position. Clearly. But again... Uh, you know, the, each person to each person their own. I just like to make videos. I like to get my point across, let everybody know my opinion on the thing, and it's up to them to either believe it or not. Well, dear, they just don't believe it on faith. The evidence points to it. That evidence right there is a very good example. You see the depressurization of the cabin. You see the pressure wave when the flag moves. You know, seriously, this is science. We demonstrated it. We've done it in vacuum chambers to show that it happens. All right. So, yes, it's up to them whether they want to believe it or not, but they believe it based on the preponderance of evidence. You, on the other hand, have a conspiracy story that you use to sell T-shirts. No amount of evidence will ever convince you. We could take you up there and drop you next to the uh, Apollo 17 lander base. You could touch it with your hand. You could read the little plaque. You could walk in the footprints of the astronauts, and then we'd bring you back to the spherical Earth, and you still would come out and say the Earth is flat, buy my t-shirts. So, this is for the people that aren't Jared. We went to the moon. It was a hell of an accomplishment, and quite frankly, as an American, I'm very proud of it, and I look forward to have men and women back on the moon in 2024. I think it'll be another great accomplishment for the world. In the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. 
remember to hit that little like and subscribe button down there in the corner. And if you want, stop by and hit up my Patreon. You can do it for any amount of money. We've got some levels. You don't get anything special for it. It's just a way of supporting the channel. So thank you very much for stopping by, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.